Hello viewers, welcome to the brand new section, C++ multi-threading APIs. This section takes a detailed look at the features provided by each of these APIs, as well as the similarities and differences between each of them. In this section, we'll cover POSIX threads, Windows threads, and POCO. Let's start with the first video of this section, POSIX threads. In this video, we are going to take a look at pthreads thread management, mutexes, condition variables, synchronization, semaphores, thread local storage. pthreads were first defined in the POSIX.C1 standard from 1995 as an extension to the POSIX standard. At the time, Unix had been chosen as a manufacturer neutral interface, with POSIX unifying the various APIs among them. Despite this standardization effort, Differences still exist in pthread implementations between OSs which implement it, for example, between Linux and Mac OS, courtesy of non-portable extensions marked with underscore MP in the method name. Let's look at the features offered by the pthreads API. These are all the functions which start with either pthread or pthread ATTR. These functions all apply to threads themselves and their attribute objects. The basic use of threads with pthreads looks like this. The main pthreads header is pthread.h. This gives access to everything but semaphores. We also define a constant for the number of threads we wish to start here. The value 5 denotes that. We define a simple worker function, which we'll pass to the new thread in a moment. For demonstration and debugging purposes, one could first add a simple C out or print f base bit of business logic to print out the value sent to the new thread. Next, we define the main function. We create all of the threads in a loop in the main function. Each thread instance gets a thread ID assigned as first argument when created in addition to a result code returned by the pthread create function. The thread ID is the handle to reference the thread in future calls. The second argument to the function is a pthread attr t structure instance, or zero if none. This allows for configuration characteristics of the new thread, such as the initial stack size. When zero is passed, default parameters are used, which differ per platform and configuration. The third parameter is a pointer to the function, which the new thread will start with. This function pointer is defined as a function which returns a pointer to void data that is, custom data, and accepts a pointer to void data. Here, the data being passed to the new thread as an argument is a thread ID. Next, we wait for each worker thread to finish using the pthread join function. This function takes two parameters, the ID of the thread to wait for, and a buffer for the return value of the worker function, or zero. Let's take a look at mutexes. These are functions prefixed with either pthread mutex or pthread mutex attr. They apply to mutexes and their attribute objects. Mutexes in pthreads can be initialized, destroyed, locked, and unlocked. They can also have their behavior customized using a pthread mutex attr t structure, which has its corresponding pthread mutex attr functions for initializing and destroying an attribute on it. A basic use of a pthread mutex using static initialization looks like this. In this last bit of code, we use the pthread mutex initializer macro, which initializes the mutex for us without having to type out the code for it every time. In comparison to other APIs, one has to manually initialize and destroy mutexes, though the use of the macros helps somewhat. After this, we lock and unlock the mutex. There's also the pthread mutex try lock function, which is like the regular lock version, but will return immediately if the reference mutex is already locked instead of waiting for it to be unlocked. In this example, the mutex is not explicitly destroyed. This is, however, a part of normal memory management in a pthreads-based application. Moving on to condition variables. These are functions which are prefixed with either pthread cond or pthread cond attr. 
they apply to condition variables and their attribute objects. Condition variables in pthreads follow the same pattern of having an initialization and a destroy function in addition to having the same for managing a pthread cond ATTRT attribution structure. This example covers basic usage of pthread condition variables. In the code, we get the standard headers and define a count trigger and limit. We also define a few global variables, a count variable, the IDs for the threads we wish to create, a mutex variable, and a condition variable. This function essentially just adds to the global counter variable by obtaining exclusive access to it with count mutex. It also checks whether the count trigger value has been reached. If it has, it will signal the condition variable. To give the second thread, which also runs this function, a chance to the mutex, we sleep for one second in each cycle of the loop. In this second function, we lock the global mutex before checking whether we have reached the count limit yet. This is our insurance in case the thread running this function does not get called before the count reaches the limit. Otherwise, we wait on the condition variable providing the condition variable and locked mutex. Once signalled, we unlock the global mutex and exit the thread. A point to note here is that this example does not account for spurious wake-ups. Pthread's condition variables are susceptible to such wake-ups, which necessitate one to use a loop and check whether some kind of condition has been met. Finally, in the main function, we create the three threads with two running the function which adds to the counter and the three running the function which waits to have its condition variable signaled. In this method, we also initialize the global mutex and condition variable. The threads we create further have the joinable attribute explicitly set. We wait for each thread to finish, after which we clean up, destroying the attribute structure instance, mutex, and condition variable before exiting. Now let's see synchronization. Functions which implement synchronization are prefixed with pthread rw lock or pthread barrier. These implement read-write locks and synchronization barriers. A read-write lock, RW lock, is very similar to a mutex, except that it has the additional feature of allowing infinite threads to read simultaneously, while only restricting write access to a singular thread. Using RW lock is very similar to using a mutex. In this code, we include the same general header and either use the initialization function or the generic macro that is pthread rw lock initialization. The interesting part is when we lock rw lock, which can be done for just read only access. The pthread rw lock rd lock function applies a read lock to the read write lock referenced by rw lock. Here, the second variation returns immediately if the lock has been locked already. One can also lock it for write access. These functions work basically the same, except that only one writer is allowed at any given time, whereas multiple readers can obtain a read-only lock. Barriers are another concept with pthreads. These are synchronization objects, which act like a barrier for a number of threads. All of these have to reach the barrier before any of them can proceed past it. In the barrier initialization function, the thread count is specified. Only once all of these threads have called the barrier object using the pthread barrier wait function will they continue executing. Semaphores were not part of the original pthreads extension to the POSIX specification. They are declared in the semaphore.h header for this reason. In essence, semaphores are simple integers, generally used as a resource count. To make them thread safe, atomic operations such as check and lock are used. POSIX semaphores support the initialising, destroying, incrementing and decrementing of a semaphore, as well as waiting for the semaphore to reach a non-zero value. Now we take a look at thread local storage. With pthreads, TLS is accomplished using keys and methods to set thread-specific data. In the worker thread, 
we allocate a new integer on the heap and set the global key to its own value. After increasing the global variable by 1, its value will be 2, regardless of what the other threads do. We can set the global variable to 0 once we've done with it for this thread and delete the allocated value. In the main function, a global key is set and used to reference the TLS variable, yet each of the threads we create can set its own value for this key. While a thread can create its own keys, this method of handling TLS is fairly involved compared to the other APIs we're looking at in this section. That's all we've got for POSIX threads.